great day to craft today. I've got a little bit of rain coming down around me, but I thought I would show you a little bit of a twist on my high-low technique. We're going to do some embossing with it. So for today's card, we'll be using the Austrian background. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love, love this background. We're also going to be using the finishing touches, the Delicate Daisy Open Petal. And to do our embossing, I've got the Quilted Flower Embossing Folder by Creative Expressions. So let's get started. I'll put these to the side. First thing we're going to do is to cut our background. So I'm just going to use the outer portion of the background die here. I've got a piece of coconut white card. And we're going to tape it into place, just centering it. Put a little bit of uh, removable tape on either side and we'll get our boards. Put that with the cutting edge face down onto my cutting plate. And cover it up with the base plate. Run this through. Now on your backgrounds, they almost always will need two passes through just because of the size of the die and the detail. So we'll run this through, check it, and we've got almost all of it cut, just a little bit here, so I'm going to turn it this direction now and pass it through one more time. That should do the trick. Now I'm not going to emboss this because we're going to do that later with the folder. So let's just take and remove this. I'm going to peel up carefully the removable tape that I put on there. And see how lovely that is. So I've got all my little pieces out. We'll set this out of the way. Now, if you, um, if you have one of the tool-in-ones, you can use this to go across this and clean this really quickly. So, first thing we're going to do is take a piece of double-sided adhesive, and this is by Creative Expressions, and you've got, um, it's, it's basically a piece of backing um, paper and a piece of backing paper with the adhesive in the center of it. So I'm just going to peel back one of the sides, and it doesn't matter which one. And on the front of this particular uh, die cut, I'm going to attach this. And I'll tell you what, let's see if I can just center that so it covers it all nicely. Okay. And I'm going to use the uh, waxy side of this to make sure it's just put into place nicely. And before I go any further, we're going to do a little bit of trimming because we don't want to catch that edge with our gilding flakes. So I'm just going to pop it into the paper trimmer and trim it down. And since you've got a little bit of sticky on there, it may stick to your blade. Oops. Let me see if I can get that hold of that a little better. There we go. Just a tiny bit more here. Let me hold on to that. There we go. Okay. Get rid of our little pieces there. Now, I've got that sticky sheet. Now, on the back of this, we are going to do our gilding. So let me just tuck a little piece of copy paper underneath me. I can keep it a little tidier that way, I think. And we're going to go to our Creative Expression Gilding Flakes. This is Calypso, which I think is really, really pretty. Look at the colors in that. So I'm just going to pop some on the sticky pieces. And I love to just kind of pull some of the different colors out of that pot because you've got a mixture of golds and coppers and blues and purples. So I'm going to start pushing them around onto the exposed sticky portion of that design. And I'm using a Rub It Scrub It pad from Ranger because I think these are the perfect way to move these around and make sure you get them into all the little nooks and crannies. There we go. Isn't that pretty? 
And then because it's got a little bit of a, um, um, a woven part there, it will take and refine off all the extra bits that you don't want, giving you a nice smooth finish. So I'll just take it onto the copy paper here. And of course you have a little bit left that you can put back into your pot too, so it saves you quite a bit of money. Tap that off. And when you're using your gilding flakes, just be sure to have any of your fans and things like that off so they don't blow away. They're very lightweight, so I'll tip this back into place. There we go. And put the lid on. Oop, let's get that guy back in there. Okay. So now we've done one side, and that is actually the back of your die. Okay, so now we can go around and I'll use this side here. And I'm going to, oops, I've misplaced, oh, there it is, my ice snow. So we'll take and peel this front piece off because remember it was double-sided with a backing piece on both sides. So I'm just gonna get this going, there we go. Carefully peel that off. So I've got the entire adhesive piece right there. I'm going to put the ice snow across the top. Ice snow is a really lovely, um, it's a glitter that's like a jewel. It's very small little discs and it's completely clear, which I love. You don't have an interference color. So I'm going to put a little bit on. Let's see, a little bit more. We can take it back off. Rub it around with my finger and make sure it gets onto all of that sticky sheet and gets coated really nicely. Just keep pushing it around. In fact, you could even use your rub it, scrub it to kind of move it a little bit. And a little bit more over here. There we go. And then you can just get all your extra off there. Make sure you've got all of it covered really nicely. In fact, there's a little edge there. Okay. Set that aside and let me tip this back into the jar so we don't waste it. Okay, put the lid on. And you could leave it like that, but just to give you a little bit extra something that you can do to kind of change the look of this, we're going to emboss this now. So I'm going to pick the uh, quilted flower and I'm gonna set that inside of there. And it's got a kind of a geometric pattern, so you wanna try and line it up straight with one of the lines. And you can hear a little bit of the kind of crunching sound from the ice snow, perfectly normal. So I'm gonna pop that onto my base plate with my raspberry plate on top, that's the sandwich for it, and we're gonna run it through. And that's what you're hearing is the ice snow. It does a real good job of actually burnishing into, into the design too. Pop this out and then carefully Peel this gently back from your folder. Get a corner, let me find the, uh, there we go. Don't pull too hard, you don't wanna rip it. And it'll just walk it back. You can see it just goes over the entire pattern, gives you really lovely detail to your background. So although you've got the, the uh, high-low technique going on, you've also got the embossed added extra feature there to really draw the eye in. So I've gone ahead and done one ahead of time where I've actually used the opposite side. So I've got more of a deboss look on this one and I've gone ahead and matted it with a, a white paper layer around it. So I'm gonna use that for my card and put that onto a backing that I've done some piercing using a little mounting foam here. I love the dimension on my cards. We'll center this. That looks nice. So I've got that all ready to go. You can use that for something else. And I've previously cut several of these um, open daisies. Look how pretty they are, just beautiful. But I'm gonna layer them up with a little bit of glue between them. So I'm just gonna pop some of the dries clear glue on the centers of these. And I think they're prettiest when they are just offset slightly, giving you a really nice full daisy look. Isn't that pretty? Give that a second to adhere. We'll pop this one on here. 
same exact way, layering it up sideways or um, offset, and we'll put them together. Now, the other thing I like to do is once they're dry, just give them a little bend and you can add form to your flowers and really make them come to life. Put that right into the center there. And I've got an eight millimeter flat back pearl that I'm just going to finish off the very center of this with. Show you how pretty that is so far. Look at that flower, isn't that lovely? Now, I've gone ahead and cut a piece of tulle, tied it into a knot, because I love the way these look just seated onto some tulle. It's not quite as heavy as if you're using a ribbon or something. So I'm gonna use a glue dot get this into place, and I think I'll put it right about here. Spread that out a little bit, just kind of fan it out. Um, I've just done a little bit of a gold um, piece of braid here that we're gonna put on top, just to kind of draw your eye in a bit more. And the flower can be seated on top of that. So pretty like that. And I stamped a sentiment and I've embossed it with some copper, ancient copper embossing powder, just to kind of tie in with some of the colors from this. And I'll tell you what, let's just even put a little bit of mounting foam on the back here, and then we'll tuck the end of that underneath our flower. And I'm gonna use a little bit of glue to secure it. Just like that. And to finish it off, I've made a couple little stick pins. Now, I love doing my own stick pins with jewels and pearls and things, and I use glossy accents to secure them to the pin. And then I just put the sharp part of that into the knot from either my bow or tool underneath the flower so nobody would ever get themselves stuck with that. There you go. How simple is that? And I would think that anybody that would receive a card like this would think, oh my goodness, how did they do that? So you can really amaze your friends. Hope you've enjoyed today's video.